Hi, I'm Carl Taylor from Visual Education. Welcome to this series on lighting modifiers where we look at all different types of lighting modifiers for photography and video. This week's episode is about the ring flash. So we've looked at lots of different types of modifiers in this series so far and we've got more to come and hopefully this library of lighting modifiers uh, videos that we're building for you will help you understand the purposes of uh, all the purpose sorry of all these different modifiers what they're used for in photography now this one's a little bit unusual not a lot of people come across these very often they used to be very much more popular in the 90s, early 2000s, late 80s as well for fashion photography. There was quite um, a trend at the time for a lot of stuff with ring flash photography. Personally, I've never really liked the look of the light that you get from a ring flash, but it is of course a type of lighting modifier. It's a little bit different to uh, many things you'll see. So let's give you a little bit of a run through uh, on what it is and how it's used. Now, unlike many other modifiers, which are the modifier only, and then you put the light into that modifier, the ring flash is an integrated unit with the flash unit already inside. So what we have here is this is actually the modifier part, but if you look closely inside here, you can actually see the flash tube in a big circle there, and I'm gonna fire it off there, that flash tube is integrated into the modifier. So this is a light and a modifier all in one. It's not a modifier that you attach to a normal light to create the ring flash. As such, there's a switch on the back of this one, and that switch turns on our modeling lamp, which is also integrated in there as well. And if we look from the front, you should be able to get an idea of the illumination. You have the uh, reflector shield here, which basically bounces light backwards that way and stops the direct light from the modeling light or from the flash tube hitting the subject. And then the light is hitting the subject from here. You also have a version which is designed to be a little bit softer in white, but ironically, my tests seem to show that the version in white actually looks a bit harder uh, than the silver version, but you've got the two versions. So you can take the silver one off and put the white one on if you prefer the white. Now, one of the interesting things about a ring flash is how we use it. You may notice this big hole coming through the middle of the modifier here and this rather convoluted set of attachments here. Well, the way a ring flash is used is it is attached over the front of the camera lens and it is designed that the camera would shoot through the uh, ring flash center so that you have a lighting axis that is directly parallel to the symmetry of the lens. So all of the illumination is directly front facing and that gives a kind of unique look to the lighting in the sense that when you put that line or access of light on the same line of symmetry as the lens then you have extremely frontal lighting but because the ring is outside this area the axis is also coming in at a slight angle and therefore you arrive at a strange sort of shadow look, especially on your backgrounds uh, via that ring flash. Now, they were quite um, trendy, as I said, in the 80s and 90s for a certain sort of fashion look or a certain reflection in the eyes. They are also used quite a lot, smaller versions are used quite a lot in macro photography because you can put them on the lens, get in quite close. Canon used to make an interesting one for the end of their macro lenses uh, for insects and all sorts of nature photography. And they're also used in forensic photography as well 
So forensic teams have the ring flash on the end of the lens. And on some of those ring flashes, you can either set the flash tube to light just on the left or just on the right or all together as one uh, so that you can cast the light from one direction or the other. Now this particular ring flash is quite a powerful one. I think this one goes up to 3,200 joules if necessary. Um, my friend and fellow photographer Tim Flack actually uses a ring flash quite a lot. Not as his main light or as his key light, but what he likes to do is he likes to use the ring flash to fill in the shadows so he can reduce the density of lighting in those beautiful animal portraits um, that he takes. And on a previous workshop that um, we, we were running, he had uh, one of my assistants holding the ring flash using the ring flash very close to the axis of camera and he likes to use it as a shadow fill to not remove the shadows but to basically change the density of those shadows and he uses it to very very good effect on his beautiful fine art um, animal portraits. I've used a ring flash occasionally on um, the odd image here and there I've also created a couple of classes, I think, on how to simulate the look of a ring flash uh, as well. But it's not really a modifier that I regularly use. I do obviously have it here in my collection. Let's take a look on our lighting comparison app at what a ring flash looks like and uh, how it compares to some of the other modifiers. So on the left here, I have Bear Bulb Studio Light. And on the right, I have a ring flash on camera. That means that the ring flash is on the camera lens. The camera lens is coming through that center hole of the ring flash. Now you can see looking at the shot there that it looks quite harsh uh, and contrasty, as does a bare bulb, as you would expect. You can see the difference in the exposure on the backgrounds. Uh, let's go in for a closer look on the eyes on both of these shots. And you can see that we are getting a point light source from the bare bulb light there. Um, and you can see I'm getting the ring flash effect um, on the eyes, uh, in the center of the eyes there. Now what's interesting though is if you look at the sort of reflections we're getting off the skin tones, you can see that any front facing skin such as the forehead, and these parts of the cheeks just here, and this part here just under the eyes, these are facing almost um, perpendicular to that line of symmetry of the lens and therefore the ring flash as well and they're bouncing that light straight back at camera. So because of that axis that the light is coming at the subject that's causing these highlight reflections, these image forming reflections of the light source to be bounced back in that way. So that gives quite a unique look in one sense with the ring flash. The next thing to look at is the shadows that form. So if we look at the shadows forming here with a bare bulb light that's set slightly above camera height, you can see the shadows slightly stronger, a little bit more contrast on the ring flash there. Also looking at the bounce back of light on the lips as well. Um, the shadows themselves are quite interesting with a ring flash. Notice that you almost get like a halo glow around the subject. So we have an area around the subject that is actually a shadow, but it's like a glowing halo shadow all the way around the perimeter of the subject. And that's another uh, consequence of the ring flash, another effect created and caused by the ring flash. Now that particular high contrast look that you're seeing here um, is interesting because this was quite the rage in uh, a lot of sort of hard lighting fashion photography, as I said, in the, in the 90s. Uh, and then it kind of went out of fashion a little bit. Notice the extra structural strength of the shadows on the collarbones and the shoulders here compared to the uh, bare bulb. Now remember a bare bulb studio light is a very high contrast light, hard light, high contrast, yet look at the extra sort of high contrast you're getting with that ring flash. Notice also the face is being exposed 
uh, more brightly than the rest of the body because the camera lens is pointing directly at the face and the eyes and therefore that line of symmetry of light is doing the same. Now we're viewing all of this uh, on visualeducation.com using our lighting comparison app. This app allows you to compare all different types of lighting modifiers against each other and then you choose the lighting modifier that you want to compare against on one side and then you can compare it against a different lighting modifier on the other side. So at the moment here obviously I have the ring flash. Now um, we can also use the ring flash at a greater distance. If I go to full length body shots you can see here the bare bulb studio light compared to the ring flash. Look at that strange shadow that's created by the ring flash. See how I was talking about how it creates this almost like a halo shadow glow around your subject because of that light axis coming directly from uh, the lens. If you move the ring flash here to 1.5 meters above camera, then of course it changes the look of the light considerably and in some ways it can actually be quite an effective light um, when it's used from above. Notice the sort of double edge shadow you get though because the light source is not coming from one central small area, it's coming from that periphery area there. So that's it used in uh, a position 1.5 meters above camera but also notice how you get that strange double shadow effect going on there when we've moved it off axis from the camera compared to on camera when you have that strange uh, surrounding uh, shadow around your subject. So that's basically it about the ring flash. I was comparing the images there in the lighting comparison app on visual education. If you'd like to learn more about lighting, head over to visualeducation.com. We've got some really great specialist information there, plus access to the uh, lighting uh, modifier app to compare uh, all types of studio lighting. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.